mortals for a safe trip remain seated keeping your hands arms feet and legs inside the cabin be sure to watch your children and no smoking please welcome to the pirates and princesses podcast we're a different kind of disney podcast we do it our way we talk about disney parks disney movies tv video games anything disney i'm your host tom pratt and i'm your other host cambria pratt Welcome back to the show. Hello. Hello. Hey, uh, for the first time in forever, we're going to talk oh. about Frozen <laughs> like Forever. No one's heard that after. one before. Yeah, I know, right? Right. We're going to talk about Frozen uh, Forever After on this podcast and all of the craziness surrounding it today. Yes. But uh, first, we're going to give a shout out to our official travel sponsor. Yay! Our official travel sponsor is Mickey Vacations by Academy Travel. And uh, we thoroughly recommend them. Yeah. I mean, they're really, really good. And they're really nice, too. And they're really nice. And they are an earmarked agency. If you go to mickeyvacations.com backslash PNP, we actually have a, a special VIP page set up. Yeah. And uh, that'll put you in touch with Lisa and her crew at Academy Travel, and they will hook you up with the best Disney vacation you've ever had. I'm sure they will. I'm sure they will. They've been doing this for a very long, what, like 20 years? 20 years. 20 years. And they're platinum earmarked. Platinum earmarked. So that's like the best you can you can get, definitely. Uh, and also on there, I, I want to note that they're having a promotion uh, where you can win a four-night stay at a deluxe hotel at Disney World. Uh, so uh, definitely uh, go to mickeyvacations.com backslash pnp that'll take you to the pirates and princesses portal page that's a lot of that's peas. a lot of peas it's a lot of peas you know stick with us you get a lot of peas. right <laughs> and uh yeah you'll get some some really cool bonus stuff that you wouldn't get otherwise and, yeah uh, so check it out check them out highly recommend it why people are asking well why should we use the disney planner because i am telling you what it saves you so many headaches yeah we've it's done it we've done it funny. both ways i mean we've we've planned trips ourselves and we've tried to Oh, I won't go back to that. Yeah, no, 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 no. And the great thing, too, is if a special promotion comes up, sometimes you don't know about it and they do, they can hook you up even more. Yeah. So definitely use a planner. It doesn't cost you anything. There's no nope. extra charges. It costs you no more than it would cost you to book your vacation. And they can probably save you a bunch of money. Well, yeah, because they're going to have access to all the special codes and stuff that, that goes out first. And, and even just reservations. I mean, you can have them... Uh, make reservations for you if you're busy. I mean, really, in our case, it was like we're always really busy to sit there and monitor mm. deals and reservations. And, um, I mean, personally, I, I I just think, you know, you should use a vacation planner. I mean, we, we've had the best experiences doing that. So, do it. Yes. <laughs> okay. okay. So, definitely check them out. Uh, MickeyVacations.com slash backslash PNP. I can't speak today because, you know, hey, it's me. That's so, okay, because you're 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 wowed by all the magic going I on. I am. At Epcot I'm impressed. I'm impressed actually today. I I am too. I am very impressed uh, by the magic today. The ride opened, and this morning, oh my gosh, it was like what nine o'clock. Tom starts showing I me live streaming. Was on Facebook. Now we're actually not in Orlando this week. We won't be going down. For we'll be there next month. A month from now, weeks. you'll find us. Yeah. So I'm no, sure we'll uh, you know we'll we'll be so on. So if you're happy to be there when we're there, please say hi. Uh, and we'll, we'll talk more about that. Maybe we can get together with a couple of listeners down there. That'd be pretty cool. So, uh, anyway, yeah, about nine o'clock this morning, I'm on Facebook and people start live streaming, uh, the crowds for Frozen Ever After, which if you've been living under a rock is the rethemed Maelstrom. Mm -hmm. It's not a new ride, it's a retheming. Yeah. RIP Maelstrom. But, uh. Yeah, so the crowds were forming. Everyone was actually going past Test Track and Soren. I know. They didn't care. They were headed for Norway or Arendelle or whatever they're calling it it's now. It's Norway, but yeah. The the in fact the, the line was so long today. I think they were saying it was like three hundred minutes or five hours. It was five hours. Yeah, wait time. It was five hours. Five hours uh, to wait for Frozen, but. Um, yeah, we're looking at pictures of the crowds right now. That's oh, insane. my gosh. But we did get a chance uh, pretty much. I think it was the first ride video or one of the first ride videos uh, from Dr. Disney on Facebook. I, I will give him a shout out. 
Um, I'm sorry, my, my, my mouth is literally hitting the floor. I mean, oh my gosh, the lines. Holy smokes. I, think, I don't think I've ever seen that. Holy. <laughs> yeah, if you go, uh, there's actually a story on uh, Fox News. I think MyFox8.com. MyFox8.com that shows several pictures they've gathered from the internet. 300 minutes. Oh my word. Yeah. Uh, well, he said it was five hours. It was five hours. Five hours. I don't hours know what it is now. I haven't checked, but. Waiting for Frozen. So ride videos start surfacing on Facebook and on YouTube. We should have been there. We were media. We were not there. So it's the same ride system that was in for Maelstrom. It's the same system. Like you go up the hill again like you did on Maelstrom. Instead of the big eye, you look like you're heading towards the ca ice castle. And it has the, the switch and you go backwards. Now, it doesn't go outside like it did. Like the back of the boat used to go outside. They yeah, I kind of missed off. that. I missed that, but... But it's still there. I mean, yeah. the, the, that used to, the back of it doesn't go out. But what do you think about what you saw? Uh, you know, okay, we we were really uh, apprehensive. If you heard any of our pod podcasts, we were like lamenting the Maelstrom's. Tristan demise. sang songs about it. Yeah, I, I I'm gonna go on record, and you you can quote me on this. I, I think the animatronics are are hands down some of the most impressive work I've seen from Imagineering ever. It there, it's awesome. Um. You know, this is not just uh, uh, an overlay that they slapped together. I mean, they really thought this one through, and it, I mean, it might as well just be an entirely new ride. Uh, it's it's really, really well done. It looks like it's something amazing. you would have seen in Shanghai. Well, our son saw it, and he's like, wait, that isn't a real person? And we're like, no, it's an animatronic. And he's like, oh my god. Yeah, they have they have Elsa uh, in the big, you know, musical number. I, I, you just guess what song she's singing. Uh, just In Summer. Yeah, yeah, okay. <laughs> um, zippity doo da. That's what she said. There saying. you go. So yeah, when you she's finally singing cha -ching. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, pretty much. So when you finally get to see Elsa, I mean the animatronic, just the the gesture she's making, it looks so natural. Yeah, our son actually thought it was a person in costume. So, I mean that's really uh, crazy, crazy. I mean, it's and then insane. it looked like they used a lot of screens that they use in the new rides too. With the it, 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 and on the, it looks impressive on the video. And we all know videos don't look as impressive as in person. So yeah. I'm sure in person it's just. Yeah. And it better be if you have to wait five hours <laughs> to ride it. But, you know, this is this is kind of interesting, though, because uh, I guess they were. Yeah. The uh, um, cast members were handing out uh, Mickey treats, ice cream treats because people were waiting in line so long. Well, they said there were some technical difficulties, too, a couple of times. But it's well, a brand new happen. ride. It's yeah. going to happen. And people were wondering why they didn't do a soft opening. I think they wanted to surprise everyone. Mm hmm. Uh, well, it's worth it. Go watch the video. It's yeah, amazing. Yeah, so it's very impressive. Um, I, I'm I'm really impressed. I mean, I, I am going to miss the Maelstrom. It, it I definitely, you know, I love the ride. It's it's but you put the two side by side, and we actually did on our, our uh, blog. I actually put a video of the the new ride. To go to their blog. Yeah, go to uh, piratesandprincesses.net, and there's a side by side of um, the uh, Frozen ride with the Maelstrom, and the Maelstrom. It hasn't aged well. I mean, it didn't age well. It's like you. Yeah. No, I'm just kidding. I mean, I can understand people having, uh, you know, a really fond feelings for the Maelstrom and the I nostalgia do. factor and all that. I, I, I can, but you know, this is 2016, and I think kids today are going to be a lot more impressed with the Frozen ride. It's, it's very impressive. It, I, I can't express yeah. to you how impressive it is. I mean, go it, watch the video. Yeah, it's. I mean, it's it's it, it is sad in a way because it's one of the last you know of the the old school Epcot rides too. I'm sad, yeah. but honestly, after I saw the video, I'm not sad. <laughs> I'm, like, yeah. I'm like, holy crap, that's awesome. And I understand. I mean, I do understand the people's feelings. They they want the old Epcot. You know the. But you know, I look at I look at what we have today, and I mean, yeah, World of Motion was kind of cool, but I love Test Track. You know, our kids mm -hmm. love Test Track. But you never saw the other one, so no, you wouldn't I know. Did, I mean, let's I mean, be fair here. I've seen ride through videos, and I'm like, mm, the only one that's qualified track. here to actually make that is, that comment was me because okay, I'm so the only World one of that's motion, seen it. World of Motion versus Test Track. They're two entirely different things. Yeah, Test Track is like really cool and fast, and World of Motion was just really cool and classic disney so i mean fast. they're apples and oranges yeah, uh, yeah. Why, why can't we have both now see there's a win-win well there we go but anyway um back to this it's just uh oh what well, did you tell people before about the, the april fool's joke because you showed it to us the other day that someone oh did my gosh it's Maelstrom. so funny they had about two months ago i think it was i want to say it was Diz kingdom uh put up a, a, a quote-unquote ride-through video 
of Frozen, and it was this really hokey uh, kids ride from Europe, and they had these like cheesy little elves, and you're in a sleigh and everything, and, and people actually fell for it. They thought it was the real uh, Frozen but ride. But wouldn't the fact <laughs> that there was no characters from Frozen be a dead giveaway, you would think? It's the internet. The internet is collectively stupid. So well, that's not nice. Except for the people who listen to this podcast. You're obviously brilliant. Incredibly brilliant, smart, talented, and really, really good looking, and you know, your breath it's just bar none, the freshest I've smelled. And I can smell it through the podcast. That's not creepy. That's not creepy at all. I'm stalking no. you, watching you through your phone. No. That's not creepy at all. That's... <laughs> anyway. Well, now you freaked everybody out. Anyway. Can I see what I have to live with? Uh, yeah, I creep on you every day. <laughs> um, yeah, so the Frozen Ride. Yes, I'm I'm impressed. Uh, I'm going to miss the Maelstrom. I'm not going to lie. I'm going to miss it. But I'm, I'm going to miss, I think, the memories of of us writing it more um but i'll get over it so <laughs> oh, it's, it's the new one I, I think i'll get over it real quick too because the new one's pretty awesome yeah now can we fix universe of energy we already took ellen out well they took ellen with her pointy stick out oh <laughs> yeah much to tristan's dismay uh and we we all agree that journey into imagination needs something well there are other rides in epcot besides frozen not that we would know it because that's all the coverage it's been about. It's been about Frozen. Well, for now, before that, it was all about Soaring Around the World. Soaring Around the World finally opened. Mm-hmm. And, the 17th. Um, yeah, you get to soar around the world in one of three theaters. Yeah. So I'm, well, I'm just like, There was <laughs> live cool. streaming of that, too, going on. I you, guess the there way was, the times for that were crazy, too. So I don't think it's anything like Frozen, though. I mean, this is no, just... But I never... think it's about half as bad as Frozen, though. I think it was like 200-something minutes. There, there, there were quite a few that. people from what I saw. I mean, it was it was pretty packed. This is where Frozen's Fast always, Pass Plus is your friend. Yeah, Frozen's always... Or, yeah, Frozen. Soren is always, always, always busy. Yeah, so the, the lines are going to be crazy along at Epcot. Oh, everything's happened at Epcot. No, not summer. Epcot. They had, um, the, was it the new Star Wars fireworks start the 17th at Hollywood, too, didn't it? And then they had a new stage show at Magic Kingdom. Oh, that's right. The, the Mickey's, uh, was it Mickey's Fantasy Fair? I don't remember. But something. if you look online, there's videos of it. So go look, because a lot of people have put videos up already of the same thing. Yeah, the same all, thing. It's like, it seems like, I mean, in the summer, it's like every week they've got something new going on at Disney World. Yeah. So, yeah, I know the 17th they had a lot. And then they had opened also, on, was it the 17th, when they had the new Anna and Elsa meet and greet at Norway? Yeah, they opened a few days before uh, Frozen Ever After. Yeah. And there was some video of that and um, some of the pastries at the little snack shop they had there. Yeah, leave it to Tom to think about food. food. Speaking of food. Yeah, so let's talk about So that's a good segue food. into food. Because okay. we like to eat when we're at Disney World. Okay, so this is actually pretty cool. Um, this is kind of along with what Tom's been saying. There's going to be some dining plan tweaks uh, in 2017, and actually, I think they're good. They're good. Ones. I think I think it's a good one. But go ahead and explain. If anybody's had dining plan before, um, you have to have uh, dessert with your meal, and that's okay. I mean, who doesn't like dessert? But two meals with dessert <laughs> gets to be a and lot of August heat dessert, and then you have a snack credit, and there's like one snack credit, and sometimes you could use snack credit for breakfast type items. You know, that was nice. Yeah. Well, next year, the basic dining plan is going to include one quick service meal and one table service meal and two snacks, as well as the the refillable mug. So when you have a table service meal, I think you get dessert with that one, but you want with the quick service one. And then you get a snack, extra snack to use during the day instead. I'm going to try to find more information here. Oh, I had a I, thing for it. I can't find more. Hold on. Keep talking while I look Okay. More. Well, I, I I, mean, I have actually been saying this for a long time. That I wish you could bank your desserts because that's that was my, that's my only, I mean, we've done the dining plan a couple of times now and the my only complaint with it is it's like too much food. Mm-hmm. But if you don't take dessert with your quick service meal, you lose it. Right. So yeah, here I have it put up again. This is on www, www.info.com. And they said, uh, okay, so for 2017, a quick service dining plan is going to give you two quick service meals, an entree and non-alcoholic drink, two snacks and one refillable mug per person. The dining plan, the regular dining plan is going to include one quick service meal, entree and non-alcoholic drink, one table service meal, entree, dessert and drink or buffet meal, two snacks uh, or the resort and one resort mug per person per day. Mm. So right now they only have one snack credit. So next time it's going to do the two. And then the deluxe is going to say it's going to be three meals. You can have any combination of quick or table service. It's up to you. Mm. 
Um, table service, of course, will have the entree dessert and the drink, and quick service will just have the drink and the and the food, and then two snacks and then one mug per person. So you're basically taking the dessert out of the quick service, turning it into a snack credit, and and that's good too because some of the quick service restaurants, like I like the the food, I like the entrees at the quick service, but they they really are lacking in the dessert department. It depends. Some are good. And I'd rather save all my desserts for Dole Whips. Oh no, come on. Well, not all of them, Tom. I know you're going to be wanting at least one thing at the land. Sunshine Seasons. Can we talk about Sunshine you Seasons? You talked about it many times, but go ahead and talk Sun, about it again. Sunshine Seasons. Okay, this is this is my my pro tip for you. As far as quick service, my, my personal opinion is Sunshine Seasons has the best dessert ever. So we could go get, with quick service, you could go, like, go get your fish and chips and then go get some killer dessert from Sunshine Seasons. Well, and then you can't split up that way. You mean next year? Next year. Next year. This year you can't. But I mean, next year you could. Ne- no. Now you, you just, we just eat the sunshine, sun, sunshine seasons and get dessert. Yeah, I know. But it's like, I mean, I, I really like that. And uh, like I said, the, the, my, my only complaint, my only complaint with the dining plan has always been that there's just too much food. The dessert really pushes it. And, um, you know, to be able to bank that, I think, is, is great. Or if you're just not in the mood for dessert just be like hey i'll just go get you know snack. well, other snacks yeah, other yeah. things that are snack credits and then, and then if you have extra snack credits then you can buy things at your hotel that travel well and you can just take it back with you home yeah so i mean as long as i mean if you're going to another country it might be a little more difficult but yeah i so. think it's about time they, they did this so i mean it's yeah because when it's like in the middle of august you really don't don't want dessert with every meal you know oh here's the uh, mickey's world friendship fair we were talking about earlier obviously we have not watched this yet I'm not gonna watch it right now. No, we were watching it live streaming actually. Yeah, we were. Uh, someone was live streaming it on Facebook. I thought it was it was pretty cool. It looks like a Mickey Ren fair in front of the castle. Yeah, so. it does look, it does look like a Mickey, Mickey a Mickey Ren fair. It does. I can't speak today. I'm almost wrong. That's actually funny. But I'm looking at the costumes. That's exactly what it looks like. Yeah. A royal friendship fair. Yeah. Well, it's, it's something different. I mean, usually it's like you know Princess Palooza or something and. You know, it's the U.S. debut of Mickey and Minnie's brand new look. We got an advanced look at the evolution of Mickey and Minnie's in-park character design, thanks to the promotion for Shanghai. And while we knew these looks were going to eventually make their way to Disney World, we're surprised about that we are getting these looks much earlier anticipated. This is on dsny-digest.co.uk. So, Mickey and Minnie are still sporting their classic looks in the meet and greet and during the parades, but this is what the character looks like, the future of the character. I guess these... When you have to watch the video. Oh, yeah, because their eyes clip. Well, that's kind of like, well, yeah. like what they have now. With They've been one. doing that, yeah. So, the costumes are fantastic. The new original song is going to get stuck in your head. Much more technical production, but you won't notice. So, people say, they said it's a mixed bag. Most people seem to like it. Yeah, well, it goes with the Festival Fancy Parade, too. You know, the yeah. whole fancy theme. I love For fancy well, land, so. Well, we like fantasy because our comic we, we, we do, do is like fantasy. fantasy. So, it works for me. What else do you want to talk about? Well, we could talk about Shanghai's Shanghai? big, big opening gala. They had uh, live stream that on YouTube. I, I watched a couple minutes of it. I didn't get to. I've been really busy. I'll it, explain what I've been working yeah, on. Yeah, it's it was it was. I mean, it was a big deal. <laughs> I mean, it was a huge deal, uh, and it looks pretty impressive. But um, yeah, I guess they had the uh, the actual Disney family uh, came into Shanghai for the grand opening, and and Bob Iger was there, and. Uh, everybody, everybody who was anybody at Disney apparently was, was there. Yeah, was there. It was a huge deal. Um, the park looks, you know, pretty incredible. So I, you know, hope one of these days we can we can just do uh, Asia. We'll do Tokyo and Hong Kong and that'd Shanghai. be awesome. What is, yeah, why not? We'll just, we'll just you know, we'll just go on tour. PMP yes, does you know, Asia. Yeah, yeah, that, that could be fun. Our kids would like that actually. And like I want to stop. I'll be a giant, giant gaijin going over. Well, I want to stop in South Korea, but that's nothing to do with Disney. That's just because I always want to go there. Okay, so we got that covered for Shanghai, or anything else you want to talk about? Uh, you know, we've been talking about Shanghai nonstop. I don't know what is left to say other than it looks really impressive, and I hope to go someday and, and check it out for myself. All right, then. So, what do you want to talk about now? Um. Well, we can talk about the big Disney movie that opened this weekend was Finding Dory, and uh, 
Yeah. Oh, wait, there's a movie called Finding Dory? There is a movie called Finding Dory. Is that Frozen? I don't know. I, yeah, is Elsa and Anna in it? I don't know if anybody remembers that movie with the fish, the Finding Nemo movie. Wait, Finding Nemo? No. Yeah, I, not very many people saw it. But they made a sequel to it with, um, oh, that talk show host. What's her? I don't know. You mean Tristan's favorite? Yeah, so. Uh, he, find, he sings songs and odes to her? Yes, he does. <laughs> he does. He does. Yeah, Finding Dory opened to uh, a record-setting 136.2 million domestic over Father's Day weekend. Go Dory. Yeah, it's absolutely insane. They said that uh, women made up 62% of the audience. Why wouldn't we? So the dads must have been staying home, I guess, for Father's Day. But I want to see it, too. We actually haven't had a chance to see it yet. We were busy this weekend. Yeah, no, for Father's Day, we decided to watch... The, oh, the dinosaur. probably the worst I'm movie. Like, we hadn't watched it yet. We no. had it for all these months. We just haven't watched it. And we're like, why do we watch this on Father's Day? I'm we, not going to ruin it, but, it, you know, if you've yeah, seen it, you know what we, we're talking we about. We watched The Good Dinosaur. I'm like, well, that's not, a, that's not a good Father's which is Day movie. Not, which is not a good movie to watch on Father's Day. Um, but we did watch it. And, yeah, it was, a, it was, it was okay. okay. It was okay. I think Finding Dory is going to be better. <laughs> well, I want to see it. So I'm very excited to see this. We're going to have to get over there sometime, like, next week or two. Yeah. So we want to see Finding Dory. And everybody says it's good. And then um, there was a story, too, they're talking about what they're worried about, though. Because Dory was, she had, was a blue tang, right? Yeah. That they're worried that they're putting out PSAs to people that not to go buy blue tangs. Because they're actually incredibly hard to take care of and keep them healthy. And also because what happened with Nemo, a bunch of um, clownfish were caught until it caused actual ecological issues with their you know their numbers because we were catching them for pets and they're saying that. they're saying that. they're worried that the same thing's going to happen with the blue tang and it's going to cause some major problems for those poor fish well any any saltwater fish is is difficult to take care yeah, of but i and... guess they said these are really hard to take care of i didn't i never take care take care of one so i don't know but i mean i take care of children so i mean i'm sure you know it can't be harder than that but still it's because they can't remember where they are half the time <laughs> so that's why they're hard to take care of and you call them by name and they don't respond because they don't remember what their name actually was no dory remembers her name that's all she remembers well let's let's talk about um some merch let's talk about one of my favorite things to talk about Zoom zooms. i thought it was me no i said one of my favorite things to talk about okay Zoom zooms. i love Zoom zooms. zooms. well first of all if you play the game they started a new mickey challenge today they did. So, they wrapped up. They wrapped up the Star Wars challenge, which I thought the second part was kind of lame. Yeah, kill, I didn't kill like the it stormtroopers. I didn't really care but they much. started a new one, so there's a new challenge today with Mickey Mouse. So go check that out. And Mickey's like my worst character, so I can't really do much with him. Well, you better I'm level going him to up. Suck. Yeah. So, um, but then on July 5th, I believe it is July 5th, there's going to have some new Zoom Zooms that you can collect. So they're going to have um, a new Star Wars Force Awakens collection. Mm -hmm. It has like a BB-8 and what's all in there? I'm trying to see. BB-8 and Kylo Ren and uh, I'm looking here. Okay, the collection features two versions of Rey, two versions of Finn, Poe Dameron, BB-8, Captain Phasma, the Phasma or Phasma, however you want to say it, Stormtrooper. Uh, she's in the movie for like a minute. <laughs> and Kylo Ren. And they're going to be all available in mini sizes. Um, and select ones will be offered to medium large. Um, they're also going to be bringing in a Monsters Incorporated ones, which I love because they're going to have uh, Mike and Sully and they're going to have Boo mm -hmm. and we call our daughter Boo. So we have to have Boo. And they have Roz, Randall, and is it Fungus? Is that how you say his name? Yeah, he's one of the, the workers in Monsters. I know he is. And this, I wasn't sure I was saying it right. But uh, so yeah, they're going to have all of those and um well you have randall in the, the game don't you yeah i do yeah. so they're gonna be bringing these to the united states because i guess some of these were out in japan before um but it's gonna be the international release so i'm like yay have to have it all right let's talk about some synopsis of movies i didn't read these yet did you look at these no nope. the <laughs> no idea okay so they have official they have official blurbs out for uh the next couple of marvel movies uh so i guess we'll do we'll do doctor strange first since you have it um, pulled up. Let's scroll down a bit. Is it this one? Yep. Oh, wait, this one. No. Wait. I'll cut this part out. Sorry. I don't know where it was. You sent me all, you sent me like three different things with the same thing. Okay, cool. Where is it at? Right there. The gray, gray box. Okay. Okay, so the official synopsis for Doctor Strange, which comes out in November. And really looking forward to that one. 
Marvel's Doctor Strange follows the story of the talented neurosurgeon Dr. Stephen Strange, who, after a tragic car accident, must put aside ego and learn the secrets of a hidden world of mysticism and alternate dimensions. Based in New York City's Greenwich Village, Doctor Strange must act as an intermediary between the real world and what lies beyond, utilizing a vast array of metaphysical abilities and artifacts to protect the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Oh, he's not just protecting the village, he's protecting the Marvel Cinematic Universe. He's protecting the entire Marvel Cinematic Universe with his his hands, his magical hands. Do you wonder, like, these names, like, you know... Yeah, hello, uh, my name is Kevin Strange. Have you ever heard someone's last name no. Strange? I mean, <laughs> no. I'm, I'm just like, yeah, it's not something you hear every day. It's like, yeah, my last name's Strange. And if it was, why would your family pick that as their last name? I don't know. It should be like... Mr. Awesome or Mr. Awesome. So you could change Mr. your name? Yeah, to Mr. Awesome. Does that make me Mrs. Awesome? Yeah, we'll be the Awesomes. We'll be like the Incredibles, but not quite. No. Sure. <laughs> not that we didn't. <laughs> okay. Okay, so now the Guardians of the Galaxy to, is set to the backdrop of the awesome mixtape number two. Yeah, so... And it's Marvel's Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2 continues the team's adventures as they traverse the outer reaches of the cosmos. The Guardians must fight to keep their newfound family together as they unravel the mysteries of Peter Quill's true parentage. Old foes become new allies and fan favorite characters from the classic comics will come to our hero's aid as the Marvel Cinematic Universe continues to expand. The universe that Doctor Strange apparently is protecting. Yes. So they're yeah. So they're gonna be in space and no David Bowie unfortunately. He was I know to, that's he was so sad. He was supposed to be in it. God rest his soul. Doctor Strange is set to open in theaters on November fourth, two thousand sixteen, and Guardians of the Galaxy two will be six months later on May fifth, two thousand seventeen. So it's the uh, or two thousand sixteen. So this year's no, this year's November. I said Guardians of the Galaxy oh, next year. Oh, okay. Pay attention, man. I don't know. There's like two or three Marvel movies every year. Wait, you didn't listen to me? Imagine that. You didn't listen to what I said. Well, there's a new one. Oh, wait. That happens every day. I'm waiting for I, I don't have a comment. Yeah, so you're smart. Was, smart man. Really... Smart man. Okay. So okay. what else do we have? What else do we have? Well, I was going to talk about a couple things that we had going on that was kind of cool. Um, well, I think it's cool. You might not think it's cool. But when we're going to go to Disney uh, next month, so I thought it would be kind of cool to have outfits for Kyrie to wear for princess outfits in Disney. However, it's hot in the summer it in is. Disney. It is. Yeah, Disney World is <laughs> hot. Wearing princess dresses, full scale princess dresses, might be a little bit too warm. So, what I decided to do was um, I got an apron pattern and I sketched out some designs and I'm taking the apron pattern and I'm turning the apron into princess dresses so you can take it off easily if you're too hot. That is is a very cool idea and the ones you've, you've got done now look really really awesome well i've done so far the pictures are up on the uh, facebook page i've done um ariel and i did uh, merida's almost finished i don't have it finished yet and today i'm working on anna because you know with a new ride opening i thought it was perfect and oh yeah yeah it looks that really is good a too. pain in my butt yeah well, not you, the ride the the apron well you've been uh you've been putting pictures up on our facebook page i mentioned that already yes again <laughs> oh i'm sorry i wasn't listening if you to you listen to me i wasn't listening you would know this okay ladies anybody else out there have this problem not just me right no well go go search facebook for the pirates and princesses page i think i shortened the url on that because they have a new thing on facebook now you can shorten it it's PNP Disney Podcast, I think it's our Facebook page. I don't know. I didn't shorten it. You I, did. I think. So go out there and check that out. And we're actually going to be, I mean, there's actually a lot more content on our Facebook page than we have on our site. Even we post like pictures and reactions and stuff. Yeah, our, we have to start blogging on our site. You have to get that all straightened out so I can. Yeah. But um, But I was going to tell you one more thing that I thought was fun. Um, last weekend, we, no, we got before last, we did a uh, convention at uh, Altoona, PA, which is Sci-Fi Valley Con. And part of the convention, they do something called Conquest. And what it is, is part of the Gearbox Union, who are friends of ours, they raise money for charity. So to earn tickets for a raffle, you pay like a certain amount of money and then you get sent on quests. And then when you get, when you complete the quest, you get a bottle cap and then you can earn raffle tickets with the bottle caps. Anyway, so we had to have different quests. And my mother decided that you could speak to her in Wookiee. 
Oh, yeah. Yeah. So <laughs> we did an audio recording. Tom's going to put it on here. But she did for her quest that you can come and speak to her about one of her pouches she makes in Wookiee. And, um, and she didn't copy off of the, the, the Chewbacca mom. If you listen to other podcasts mm. prior to this, you'll hear us mention many times how we were trying to get my mom to talk to Chewbacca at other conventions we do. Mm. But yeah, so we're going to put that on the end here so you can hear my mother conversing with other people in her version of Wookiee. Okay, well, go ahead and I'll, I'll go ahead and play that, that now. Here's my mother-in-law, the Wookiee. And that was my mother-in-law as a Wookiee. People liked it. People did like it. Actually, the 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 yeah, they did. They had a lot of fun with that. I was gonna say, you know, speaking of uh, jug my memory, they actually had a Chewbacca mom got an action figure. Yeah, I saw that. Did you that see was, that Hasbro, yeah, made Hasbro. An action figure? Yeah, so. Chewbacca mom. She has an action figure with it's like a 12 inch Chewy with her head. I know that's so cool. I so. know her. That's <laughs> awesome. But my mother predates Chewbacca mom, so she's Chewbacca grandma, I guess. And she was been she's been around doing that for a long time, so a couple years now. So yeah. she predates it. But people liked it. They were talking Wookie, but sometimes it sounded. Some people sounded. My mom included. Sometimes sounded more like a you know a cat yelling than they did a Wookie, but. Okay. I can't do I can't do Chewbacca. I can't either. Some I, people I, I were really know. good at it though. There's some people at camp and they were like dead on. I was like, how are you doing that? I can't how are you making those sounds? Yeah, this is my Chewbacca. Hey. I'm Chewbacca. How you doing? <laughs> wow. <laughs> That's the best I can do. <laughs> I can't do it at all. So uh what else we wanna wrap wrap things up here this week? Yeah, let's just um that's um, pretty good. Anything else you want to mention? Well, just you know, to, to add to last week's um, incredibly sad podcast, they they actually have been putting up uh, fences and signage. And new signs, and the signs yeah. have alligator and snake warnings on the signs. Yes, which you know, I think I think is a good thing on Disney's part. Um, you know that they're doing that. Uh, why did you have to bring it down? Man? I don't know. I wasn't trying to bring it down. Just if people were worried about going to Disney World, oh, they, you shouldn't be worried about that. No, don't be worried. I mean, if, if the crowds were any evidence today, I don't think a lot of people. Yeah, are like I said, if concerned. we're down there and you see us, hey, we'll give you more information closer too when we're going. But hey, we'd love to see you. Yeah, so. we would. We'll, we'll we'll try to maybe set something up. We're we're gonna probably be uh, live streaming from Disney next month. Uh, again, go to our Facebook page, like our Facebook page. That's where all of this stuff will go on. We're on Twitter as well. Yeah. And also check out our sponsor again. What's that URL again? MickeyVacations.com backslash PNP. And you can get some links to uh, deals for Disney Vacations yes. and a contest to win four nights in a deluxe, deluxe hotel. So, pretty, I mean, pretty swanky, right? Yeah. So, yeah. yeah, go check that out and tell them we sent you. Okay, well, until next time, uh, yeah, like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, uh, go to our website at piratesandprincesses.net. You said that already. I did. You did? did. I? Well, go, go you again. You don't listen to yourself either. I don't. I don't. Uh, I don't even listen to myself. <laughs> How you doing? Um, but, uh, yeah, so we will talk to you later. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Pirates and Princesses is a production of Clownfish Studios. We are an unofficial Disney podcast, not endorsed or affiliated with the Walt Disney Company. You can visit us on the web at piratesandprincesses.net. That's piratesandprincesses.net. You can shoot us an email at piratespodcast at gmail.com. That's piratespodcast at gmail.com. Like us on Facebook. Follow us on Twitter. We'd love to hear from you. Thank you for listening and have a great, big, beautiful tomorrow.